What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we're doing the quad battery device showdown. That's right, the GX350 versus the iJoy Maxo versus the Wismec RX300. Which one will win? Let's find out. That is right, YouTube. Today we're doing a versus video or a showdown video between the RX300, the iJoy Maxo, and the Smoke GX350. All three of these devices are quad battery devices. That's right, four batteries in these devices. And of course, we're going to do a head to head showdown to find out which one of these is the best buy. We're going to kick things off with the pricing on each of these mods just to get things started. We'll test the waters a little bit. You know, we want to test the waters, see what the budget range is. Now, keep in mind that the pricing does not include the cost of batteries. And for each of these devices, you will need to marry four 18650 batteries which of course can be pretty expensive depending on where you live, depending on where you buy your batteries from, and all that good stuff. Each of these devices are running four married LG HG2s in them for my test results, so just keep that in mind for all the test results going forward, including battery life. Battery life, of course, will change depending on what batteries you use, but that's just something to keep in mind going forward. Getting to the price on these devices, let's kick things off with the iJoy Maxo. All of these prices are simply based on GearVest pricing, and by the time you're watching this video, it may have changed already. Kicking things off with the iJoy Maxo. The iJoy Maxo retails for $105 Canadian or $78.90 US. Moving on to the RX300, we have a retail price of $87.81 for the leather model and $117 for the carbon fiber model Canadian. Same prices in US would be $65.94 for the leather model and $88.48 for the, for the carbon fiber model. Finally, we have the Smoke GX350, which comes in at $95.05 Canadian and $71.38 US, which does actually put it on the cheaper end of the scale, although the leather RX300 is the cheapest one of the bunch. For that reason, I'm going to give the pricing to the RX300 because it is the cheapest, although again, you know, it's hard to say because that's pricing is only a small fraction, and realistically, the pricing difference between the three of them are actually quite close when you can compare them. Next thing we're going to talk about is battery life. I know this is something you guys are dying to hear. Honestly, the reason why I'm focusing on battery life so much and so early in this review is really because I feel like the main reason why someone would want to get a quad battery mod is probably more for the battery life than it is for the high wattages. I could be wrong there, and I'm sure there's some people out there who are looking at these devices just for the wattages that they're capable of, but at the same time, I think the battery life is going to be the biggest determining factor on these three devices. So what we're going to do is kick things off in order from least battery life to the most. And of course, none of these have a very bad battery life. They're all very good when compared to the average mod that most of you might be using now. I went from a Triad DNA 200 up to these devices, so I did see a significant improvement across the board no matter what. It is important to know that I did use the same atomizer on all three of these devices with the same coil build inside. That way I had a fair assessment of the actual battery life. All three of these, as I mentioned previously, are running LG HG2s which is important to know as well because that's going to determine the battery life. And for me, on my personal opinion, the LG HG2s do last the longest out of the batteries I've tried to date. The build I did on the Goon was from Saddler's Coils. It's a pre-made coil, and the two coils together ended up ohming out at 0.15. The biggest question is, which one of the best battery life, which one of the least battery life? We're going to kick things off with the RX300, which had the least battery life, although still not a shameful number. All these were tested at 150 watts, I was originally planning to do the tests at multiple wattage ranges, but honestly, I felt like 150 watts was pretty scalable for the most part. So we'll just scale accordingly for that, and hopefully you can scale accordingly based on your wattage needs. At 150 watts, I was getting 23 hours of battery life over the course of two days on the RX300. Now those two days were actually spanned over a work day and a weekend. That way I had a lighter vaping day mixed in with a heavier vaping day, to get that combined average of 23 hours over multiple tests. 23 hours is definitely nothing to worry about. It's it's one of those mods where I feel comfortable bringing it out and not having to worry about bringing a spare set of batteries with me because I know it's going to last more than all day and usually actually it will last me two full days before I even have to worry about changing the batteries in it. Next up is the GX350. The GX350, again, over those same two kinds of days, one workday, one weekend, I experienced about 26 hours of battery life. So slightly better than the RX300, although not a ton when you look at the grand scheme of things for a quad battery mod. This one again is one I feel comfortable with bringing out for a full day, maybe even two full days, and not really worrying about backup batteries. 
Finally, we have the Maxo. The Maxo blew the other two out of the water. It wasn't even a competition on battery life. I don't know how they did it, but the Maxo at 150 watts was giving me 38 hours of battery life. 38 hours. That spanned over again two and a half days actually for this one. And this was both for one work day, one weekend, and then another weekend day as well, just to accumulate the 38 hours it took to drain the batteries. In this category, of course, I have to give it to the Maxo for battery life which was far and away the clear winner by a significant amount. Now I did do this test multiple times on each device and it averaged about about the same time for each test I did. The Maxo, I was worried that I did it wrong. I must not have calculated something right. Maybe I got lack of sleep one night and just totally missed out on a day or something. But no, it actually gave me that kind of battery life. So the Maxo is far and away the best battery life device out of the three here. There are some issues with it though, and I'll get into that in some further categories I'm going to talk about, but in the battery life compartment, there's no question about it, the Maxo far and away outlasts the other two devices. Now that we've touched on battery life, I feel like it's a perfect segment into the onboard charging. And out of the three devices, only one of them advertises onboard charging. And I have plugged all three of them into a charge port, and I will say this, only one of them actually does charge. The one that charges the RX300, which actually has a recommended charge rate of 1.5 amps, which is actually quite a bit higher than the average mod. Now the funny thing with that is, is that even in their own user manual, in brackets next to the 1.5 amp charging, they do put a clause saying, we recommend charging externally. So while it might be nice to have that option once in a while, even they recommend charging externally. And I would hope that most people in the market for these kind of devices would have an external charger handy for charging the four batteries, because you will need it, even with the RX300, as they said it is recommended. Next thing I want to talk about is the resistance on these three devices and how low they will fire down to. Now coming from a DNA tribe, which I mentioned I was using previously, I had the luxury of pretty much having a really low resistance on some of my coils and not really having to worry about anything going wrong. I believe the default setting on the DNA 200 is 0.05 ohms as a resistance. So in comparison, I've been spoiled a little bit and I will admit, while I don't build super low and I don't buy coils that were pre-built that are built super low, I will occasionally buy coils that are pre-built around the 0 0.09, 0 0.08 mark. And that is a bit of a factor in deciding in these three devices. So it might be important to know that the only one that fires below 0.1 ohms in wattage mode is actually the iJoy Maxo, which has a low resistance of 0 0.06 for both temperature control mode and wattage mode. The other two on the other hand have two different variables for both temperature mode and wattage mode. The Smoke, for example, has a wattage mode of 0 0.1 ohms, which is the lowest it will fire down to, and in temperature control mode, it fires down to 0 0.06. So in temperature control mode, it is the same as the iJoy Maxo. The RX300, on the other hand, fires down to 0 0.1 ohms in wattage mode and 0 0.05 ohms in temperature control mode. So again, it's one of those things where if you're using temp control mode, all of these are gonna fire down to about the same, but if you're using wattage mode, it is important to know if you do like the lower builds, like I typically do, the 0.08s to 0.09s, it will only fire on the iJoy Maxo. Let's go back to the whole battery theme and let's talk about the actual battery slots or the actual battery sled on each of these devices. Let's start with the worst one. And here's where the iJoy Maxo starts to see some hindrances. The iJoy Maxo has a four slot battery compartment that pretty much is an all in one unit. You basically can put one battery in and it will wiggle around. So you have to play around with it a little bit more, a little bit more. There's no individual slots for batteries and it does become a little bit annoying when trying to put four batteries in because it has to be perfectly at an even level, level in order to get the batteries in perfectly so that they don't fall over and you're not pushing them around to make room for the other batteries. The other two, both the RX300 and the Smoke GX350, both have individual compartments for their batteries. For all three of these, they do claim to have reverse polarity protection, but at the same time, I haven't tested it. So it's hard to say for sure, and I didn't test it, so I would just say, if you're putting in the batteries on these devices, double check them, triple check them just to be safe. Moving on from the sled, let's talk about the actual door itself on the battery compartment. Far and away, the RX300 was the only one with a decent battery door. It has a very good locking system in it. It fits flush with the mod. And unlike the other two, which have gaps, creases, it almost with the iDroid Max, so it feels like it's concaving. When you put the batteries in, you see that kind of concave effect where it's looping in. And with the Smoke GX350, while it doesn't have the concave, the latch is very similar to the iDroid Max, so and there's no batteries in the device. Both the iDroid Max so and the RX350 are super loose battery doors, and it could end up causing damage down the road. One other thing I want to touch on the RX350, talking about the battery door itself, is that it seems misaligned. At least mine is. I can't guarantee that all of them are going to be like this, but mine seems misaligned a little bit, where it favors the one edge, and it kind of hangs over a little bit, 
where on the other edge it seems to be a little bit more indented. So that's just something to know if it affects you, if you're OCD kind of thing, like I can be sometimes. It is something that is noticeable and may bug you a little bit. Moving on from the hardware, the battery slide, and the battery door, let's talk about the software and how it adapts to the four batteries. The biggest thing I noticed is that with the Smoke GX350, it only displays two batteries. So as, even though you have four batteries in the device, you're really only seeing the battery levels as if there's two in there. And I get why they do it, because they're both basically in series together. So you're basically having one series on one side represented by one battery, whereas on the other side you have the other battery represented by another series. I believe that's why they did it, but I would have liked to have seen it more like the RX300, where it has all four batteries broken out very cleanly on the main screen, so you can see it easier. And the reason why I say the main screen is because the iDroid Maxo does have the readout option for the four batteries, but it's only when you take a puff, which to me makes no sense. So when you're taking a pull on the iDroid Maxo, you basically need someone else to read the screen while you're taking a puff to see where each individual battery of the four are actually at right now. Well, the RX300 does of course have a great reading for the batteries on the main screen, which is what I mentioned before. The one thing I found odd about the RX300 compared to the other two is when removing the batteries after the mod has completely died, the batteries always seem to be uneven. When putting them on a charger, I noticed that there was a significant gap between each battery. One battery might be at 3.51 volts, one battery might be at 3.55 volts, one battery might be at 3.54, one might be at 3.57. So there always seemed to be that big gap on the batteries, and when compared on the same charger using the other two devices, both the iJoy Maxo and the Smoke GX350, they were all within about 0.01 volts of each other when putting them on the charger. So that's the one thing to know that might be a bit of a hindrance down the road. If you are looking at marrying four batteries, it seems counterproductive for the mod itself to basically be unmarrying them every time you use the device. Next up, we're gonna talk about the screen placement and the menu system for each of these. Now while the screen placement on both the RX300 and the iDroid Max are both on the side of the device, it is interesting to note that the Smoke GX350 opted to go with the top screen. Now while this is great to see the screen while you're vaping, it's also a hindrance as we saw with the X-Cube 2, a previous Smoke product. And the biggest issue was if juice got into that screen, it would short out the chip and cause potential issues. Whereas the screen on the side, while it can still do that, it's less likely to do it. Where it is with the Smoke, where you do have that risk of having it right next to the RDA, and if you're an overdrip like me, that is a concern for some people. So I will be monitoring that as time goes by, but that's something to know for the screen placement. Going to the menu systems themselves, Really the best way to put this is, is that the menu systems are all feel familiar. And what I mean by that is they all feel like reminiscence of their past or their predecessors. The Smoke GX350 really does feel like an XQ menu system, the way it's designed, the way it's laid out. Everything can be done with just a trigger. You don't need extra buttons for it. It's very simple to navigate. And honestly, everything's just kind of there in front of you. The RX300 menu system, again, is very simple to use and it's very reminiscent of the RX200, the RX200S, the RX230. It's pretty much the same menu, just a little bit change to accommodate for the four batteries instead of the three. Other than that, it feels very familiar, it's very easy to use. If you've used an RX200, you're gonna be very comfortable using this one. Finally, we have the iJoy Maxo menu system, which to me feels the most refreshing, it's the most new. It's different than the rest, but it still feels familiar enough where if you need to navigate to something, you kinda of know where it is just, just from use of previous devices. But of course, getting back on top of the iJoy Maxo menu system, like I said, it's very easy to use. A couple buttons to get to the menu, Scrolling is very simple, very easy to navigate. Now the one thing I do want to say in regard to scrolling is the RX300. Both the Smoke GX350 and the iDroid Max will have a really nice scroll feature when scrolling through wattage. Once you get to 100 watts, it goes by one watt increments. Whereas the RX300 continues to go by decimal points. So you can have a wattage such as 117.7 if you wanted to. I don't know where that number came from, I pulled it out of my ass to be honest, but it's a number that can be programmed on the RX300 just by scrolling through it. That adds a little bit of complication to things because it kind of gets annoying when scrolling through. Also, the placement of the decimal is right behind the W on the wattage. So if you're trying to fine tune it to a certain decimal point, whether it be in the 50, 60, 70 watt range, or the 150, 180, 250 watt range, it is kind of interesting to know that it's in that W point, and it is a little bit misplaced from what I'm used to, so I feel like it's a little bit of an odd thing to get used to for me, but for you, maybe you like it there. I don't know. I just don't like it where it is. All right, I think we've talked enough about batteries. Let's talk about the pretty stuff in the box. Let's talk about the accessories that come in the box. Now, the GX350 kit I got did include a TFV8, but for the purpose of this review, I'm only basing this review off the mod itself, which included the pricing I mentioned earlier was just based on the mod itself. If you want the kit, it's gonna cost a little bit more. So with that being said, let's talk about the accessories in the kit for each of these. The first thing I wanna mention is that the RX300 on their website clearly shows an adapter 
which allows you to charge a cell phone from the device itself using a 510 pin to USB connection port. And why that kind of bothered me a little bit is because mine did not come with one. I cannot guarantee that yours will not either. But I found out that mine did not come with one yet on the website that on Wismax website, it does seem to indicate or it almost seems to imply that it does come with it as if it's all one kit, but it didn't come with mine. So I cannot comment if yours is going to come with it or not, but I found that was weird that that was one of the accessories I was expecting to get that wasn't in there. But again, it is what it is. So the GX350, what does it come with as far as the actual kit itself? You do get a USB update port. Again, it's not a charge port, it's an update port. You get the mod itself and that's pretty much it. With the RX300, on the other hand, you get the update port, of course, then you also get a couple options for the side panels or the stickers that are included. You get the black ones, which are pre-installed or pre-stuck onto the device, and you also get the brown ones, which of course come separately if you want to switch it up. The clear-cut winner in this, I think, is going to be the iJoy Maxa, which comes with several different colors and options to choose from. On each device, you can choose which color will match best. I like to go with the black, but there are many other colors to choose from, and the cool thing was, None of them were pre-installed, so I got to pick my own right out of the box. All right, so let's touch on one last battery-related item. And the one thing I want to mention is supporting dual batteries in the quad battery mod. Now, I found it interesting that the only device out of the three that actually supported two batteries or a two-battery option was the iDroid Maxo, which, in my opinion, actually had the worst battery sled. So I would not recommend running two batteries in it, even though I say it will. I would not recommend it. Just the way the battery sled is oriented, it does not look very secure. I feel like it's going to be a lot of moving around in there. So just keep that in mind. The RX300 does not work with two batteries. And the Smoke GX350 was supposed to work with two batteries. But in the user manual, they actually put a sticker in there saying, we apologize for the inconvenience, but unfortunately, due to safety concerns, we cannot run this device in two batteries. Next up, I want to address the maximum water change these devices. Now, I saved this for later on in the video because I felt like putting it up front, a lot of people will just assume it's, it is what it says it's going to be. But the interesting thing in all this is that the RX300 actually, even though it says it's only rated for 300 watts, it'll actually fire much higher than that. It fires about 360 watts. So clearly it's firing a lot more than that. So if you're firing it at 300 watts, you're really firing at closer to 350 to 360. The iDroid Maxo is similar. Where it advertises a 350 watt maximum, it actually hits close to 340 to 350. So again, it's definitely firing higher than what is, what is expected. And of course, you have to apply this for all wattage ranges. So what I did was apply it to the 150 watts I used to test the device for battery life. The GX350 hits the truest of the three. At 150 watts, it's hitting pretty much exactly 150 watts, which makes sense because at 350 watts, the advertised maximum wattage, it's hitting pretty much 350 watts. So realistically, if you're looking for the most wattage, they're all about the same anyways. So even though the advertised wattage is different on each of them, Ironically, the lowest advertised wattage seemed to be the highest hitting one. The GX350 hits the truest at 150, so I was getting a pretty accurate battery test. The RX300 was hitting the most off, whereas at 150 watts, it was really hitting more like 180, but that's purely speculation, so I could be off a little bit on that, but that's what it felt like the most to me. So at 180 watts, the battery life may have improved had I actually been hitting a true 150. The iDroid Max, which is last on the list, was actually hitting pretty close, but still a little bit off. It was hitting close to 160. So again, can you adjust battery life based on 160 compared to the 150 that I thought I was vaping at? Sure, you probably could, but honestly, it's not going to make a ton of difference, so I didn't really adjust the battery lives accordingly for those. The next subject I want to touch on is updates. All three of these devices do, of course, allow for updates, and of course, there's nothing really more to touch on on that. All three of them seem to have pretty simple software to update, and it's pretty much just downloading a patch. Very simple to use. That's pretty much all we're going to talk about in the update section. Finally, we reach the last subject, the comfort. Which of these three devices is the most comfortable? Well, let's flip things around again and start with the least comfortable. Honestly, in my opinion, the least comfortable of the three is the RX300. It's a little more bulky. It's a little more blocky. It doesn't feel very comfortable in the hand, but at the same time, it's manageable, and honestly, it wasn't causing me any like hand cramps or anything like that. It was just a little bit more of discomfort in general if I held it for long periods of time. The iDroid Maxo had a much more comfortable grip to it, although it is still a much bigger mod and, and it is the biggest one of the three, which does cause a little bit of dis discomfort just for the size itself. Finally, we have the GX350, which clearly feels the best in the hands. I have no idea how they were able to fit four batteries in this type of mod with this form factor to it. And it does have a really great grip to it. But the one thing is honestly, from my personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of the fire trigger. I prefer a fire button rather than the trigger system, 
But if you are used to smoke products, it does feel very familiar to you. So it's not going to be much of an adjustment. The, personally, though, having the DNAs for so long and using that for so long, I actually found that the iJoy Max was the most comfortable for me. Although I would have liked to have seen the size a little bit smaller, much like it was in the GX350. So really, between the two, I like the comfort of the GX350 for the size, but I like the firing button position for the for the iJoy Max. So, so basically, what I want to do before I get to the winner of this video, I want to announce the best feature of each of these devices and why you may want to buy each of them over the last. We're going to start things off with the iJoy Maxo, which of course the best feature by far is the battery life. I still do not know how they were able to get that kind of battery life out of that device. And again, these were all using the same batteries in them. So it's not like it had any sort of variance in the testing. The testing was pretty accurate from my standpoint. And it, it was by far and away the most life I got out of any of these three devices. So the winner for battery life clearly goes to the iJoy Maxo. Next up, I want to talk about craftsmanship and quality, and because of the way the battery door was on this one, it wins this category, and that's of course going to be the RX300. By far, it did feel like it was the best built device, and because of that, I have to give it the craftsmanship award. And finally, we come to the Smoke GX350, which wins the award for comfort. Out of the three mods, it was by far the smallest and deserves that comfort rating, and whether you like the trigger function or not for the fire button, you got to give them credit for the size of it, and it is by far the most easy to use and carry and hold all day for chain vaping. So now we know the winners of each category, the big question is which is the overall winner, the grand winner, the grand prize winner out of the three devices. What I want to do is pause the video and given all the information I've given you today, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below what you think the winner should be and if you agree with my choice at the end of this video. So I'll let you pause it right now and I think I've given you enough time so I'm going to reveal the winner. The winner of the quad mod showdown is going to be None of them. That's right, none of them. And I, I know it's a cop-out. I get it. It's a cop-out, guys. It, it really is. But hear me out, okay? Honestly, it's not because I liked all these devices so much. It's actually kind of the opposite reason. While, yes, I will use all these devices in a daily vape situation, I will not be sticking to just one of them. I will probably be rotating between at least two, maybe even three, as the time goes by. And the biggest thing I want to test is for the iJoy Maxo, I want to see if that battery door is going to hold up. Same thing for the GX350, but also for the GX350 is a screen placement. Because it's on the top, I'm worried about juice leaking into that screen, kind of like it did on the X-Cube 2, and causing a malfunction in the chip. So that's something else to keep in mind. And of course, last with the RX300. The RX300, while it does have great craftsmanship, honestly, my biggest concern is going to be that 510 pin. We've seen RXs before have issues with the 510 pin, and if it's not the 510 pin that goes, it could also be the wiring from the chip to the battery sled. And I say that because my RX2 thirds bricked out, and I'm worried that they're going to use the same small gauge wire, or I guess large gauge, high gauge wire, to have the same issue happen if it rumble, if it tumbles around too much, maybe if it gets dropped or something. I don't want it. I don't know how well it's going to hold up over time. I know, for example, my RX two thirds bricked out. What I don't know is, is if this one's any better, and that's one thing I want to know over time. So that's why I've copped out on this one. And that's why I've said there is no winner because all of them do have issues and all of them could have issues down the road that could honestly lead to each of these mods breaking out on me at some point. And because of that reason, I can't give an accurate winner. And even with three weeks of time with these devices, it's going to be hard to tell how each one will hold up. So what I'm going to do is I'll have an update video. If any of these devices end up not working on me or end up basically breaking out or stop working completely and become a paperweight, then I'm going to update you guys as they happen, if it happens. So that's pretty much the answer I have, is that I don't have a clear-cut winner in this showdown. I hope you guys aren't disappointed. I hope you guys didn't come here just for the winner. But what I do hope is that I was able to supply enough information on each of these devices to help you make a decision if you are in the market for one of these, especially if you're in the market for a quad device. Other than that, I think that pretty much covers it all. So thank you guys all so much for watching. I know this is a longer video. I hope you enjoyed it, though. I hope it was helpful. And even though there wasn't a winner, I hope you guys still appreciate the time and research I put into doing this video. And hopefully it pays off in the end where you guys enjoy it and it helps at least one person out in making a decision on which mod to get. So thank you guys all for watching. And until next time, YouTube, happy vaping.